Okay, in our last video, we talked about the job cost sheet. So here I have an example. The job cost sheet in job order costing keeps track of our materials, our labor, and our overhead costs. Uh, materials, these are actual, so I'm going to put actual here. Uh, labor, these are the actual labor costs because we'll be tracking the materials coming in here. I showed you that journal entry before. They'll be coming out of raw materials and going into our job cost sheet where we track our work in process. Uh, same thing with labor. As these people work, we'll take the, uh, their wages and we'll put them in here, the actual wages, into this job cost sheet. So we're, we're keeping track of the actual material labor costs. <clears throat> Overhead is not actual. It's allocated. And the reason being is because <clears throat> there's lots of overhead costs that we're accumulating. Insurance costs, rent, salaries for supervisors, all sorts of costs. <clears throat> and they're taking place, excuse me, <clears throat> they're taking place throughout the time period. So it's really hard for us to get the exact costs and allocate those exact costs here. Okay, So that's why we're going to accumulate the costs separately and we're going to allocate overhead as it's incurred. Okay. And we're going to figure out a way to allocate this, and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. Okay, we're going to have a predetermined overhead rate. Predetermined overhead rate. And that is calculated by taking an estimated uh, overhead cost, estimated overhead cost for the time period, dividing it by the estimated. activity base. Okay? Estimated overhead cost divided by estimated activity base. All right? So let's say that our um, estimated overhead costs are 100,000. So I'm going to put here 100,000. And our activity base is how we're going to allocate this. Now there can be all sorts of activity bases. Some examples are direct labor hours, direct labor costs, square footage, machine hours. Those are some common ones, okay? It's just a way that to, for us to allocate this overhead into our job, okay? So let's say that uh, the activity base that we're going to use are direct labor hours, and let's say we're estimating that we're going to use 10,000 direct labor hours. So I made this kind of easy for us, all right? So 100, these are estimated costs our estimated labor hours that we're going to use in this time period. We believe that our employees are going to need 10,000 hours to manufacture whatever we have, whatever we're manufacturing, all right? So what we're, going to, what we're saying then is for every hour that our employees are working, manufacturing, we're going to allocate $10 of overhead into here, okay? All right, so let's say that our job, let's say this job right here, uh, uses eight hours um, of labor, okay? So then we would just take eight, our eight hours times our labor rate of $10, I mean not labor rate, but times our predetermined overhead rate of $10, which gets us $80, okay? So we'd be putting $80 of overhead costs into this job, all right? So now let me let's take a look at our overhead account. Okay, our overhead account as we have actual costs. Okay, actual overhead costs get put in as a debit. Okay, so we're going to debit those costs, and then as we use them, as we allocate them into our job, we're going to credit. We're going to take costs out of here. Once again, actual costs go in here. And then allocated costs come out of here going into each respective job. Okay? A little bit confusing, so you really got to think about this. Our overhead costs, uh, we don't know exactly what they're going to be, so as we incur them, we put them in here. And then on an estimated basis, we take them out of here. And in this case, the estimated basis is $10. So every time we have a labor hour, we're going to take $10 out of here and put it into whatever job it belongs into. So for this example, it's eight hours that are coming out of here. So eight hours times the $10 rate gets us $80. So $80 will be coming out of here and going into this, this job. Okay. And the journal entry to allocate that would be work in process inventory, $80. So we're putting it into 
the job, $80, and then uh, overhead account would be credited right there, $80. Okay, so there's our journal entry. Okay. Let me just show you how inventory, I'm sorry, let me show you how uh, costs get put into overhead, okay? So let's say we've got some indirect materials, some glue, different things like that. Well, that would go into our, our overhead account, and I'm just going to put X for whatever dollar amount, maybe it's $100 worth of glue and other materials are going in there, and then we're taking it out of our raw materials inventory area, whatever that dollar amount is, okay? So it would come out of raw materials and it would be going into actual overhead count, okay? And then once again, as we use, as we incur, in this case, um, uh, direct labor hours, that's when they get, the, the costs come out, okay? Now you're probably wondering, well, wait a minute, if actual costs are coming in and allocated costs are going out, at the end of the period, there's probably going to be a balance in here. You're right, there probably will be. We're not going to estimate exactly right. That would be very unusual. So we're either going to over allocate or under allocate. So if we have, if we take out too many costs, then we've over allocated, okay? And then if we haven't put in enough costs, then we've under allocated, all right? And we'll see that in just a second. All right, uh, let's take a look at uh, some labor, some indirect labor costs, okay? Uh, we'll put indirect labor costs, like our supervisors, maybe janitors, uh, we'll put their wages into our overhead account. So as they work, the wage that they earn, uh, we will debit the overhead account. So we're putting those indirect costs in there, and then we'll have wages payable. as the credit, okay? Wages payable as the credit. And then later we'll pay them and we will debit the wages payable and credit cash when we actually pay them. But as they're earning their wages, uh, we'll, we'll record the payable and we'll put their, the cost of their uh, wages into the overhead account, okay? And then once again, we allocate those out on an estimated basis. And like I said, it's an estimated activity base. That's how we're, we're estimating the, the um, dollar amount to allocate. In this case, we're using direct labor hours. We could use something like square footage, okay, or we could use such things as machine hours, okay. Whatever's the best way to allocate is the way that we're going to choose, okay. We're going to try and come up with the best way to allocate our overhead uh, that reflects what's really taking place in the business. All right, let's see. I think that's it. Let me just double check here. Um, so that's how we handle uh, overhead. Oh, one more thing. Uh, let's say our actual overhead is 100,000. And let's say we allocated 105,000. Okay? So the actual overhead cost at the end of the period were 100,000, and we allocated 105,000 to all of our different jobs. And we accumulated all of our job costs. We allocated a total of 105,000. So in this case, we've over allocated. So what we're going to do is, you know, this overhead account at the end of the period is, is just a temporary account. So we have to eliminate it. So what do you think we would do with that 5,000 credit here? Okay, well, we're going to have to eliminate it. So we would debit overhead 5,000 to get rid of the balance. We need to zero this out. And then we're going to have to credit something. And what we're going to credit more than likely would be cost of goods sold. Because these costs eventually went into the job cost sheet, into fixed finished goods, and were sold, okay? So probably what took place is our cost of goods sold is too high. So uh, we're gonna have to credit our cost of goods sold uh, to reduce it to what it really should be, okay? But we were pretty close here, and we expect that, the, that there's gonna be some sort of difference. Okay, let's say on the other hand that we actually allocated only 99,000 and our actual was 100,000. Well, in that case, in order to close out our overhead account, we're going to debit cost of goods sold, 1,000, and credit the overhead account, 1,000. Okay, because we've got to get this equal, so we put $1,000 here to make this 100,000 so that it's zeroed out at the end of the period, 
and then we will put an additional thousand dollars. Because what happened basically is we under allocated. We under allocated our overhead costs. So now what has to happen is we need to take that additional thousand dollars and put it into cost of goods sold, okay, where it belonged. All right? All right, class. Uh, this is kind of a little bit tricky area. Uh, it takes a little bit of time, so make sure you read through your textbook. And probably you might need to review this video a couple times too uh, to make sure you understand how we handle overhead costs. Thanks.